Hi everyone and welcome to my Zodiacathon reading vlog. It's been a minute since I participated in a readathon so I'm pretty excited to get to this one. Obviously as per always school kind of gets in the way <laughs> so already like I missed the first couple of days because I had my psychiatry exam on Friday and but at least for this weekend, I'm taking a break and I'm gonna try to get as much reading as I can. Let me tell you quickly what my TDR is, I'll tell you what my plans for the day are, and then I'll stop talking and we can read. <laughs> so as you may or may not know, based on whether I actually post the video, I was in the middle of the fifth season and I was hoping to actually finish it before this readathon started, but I wasn't able to. I'm about 300 pages in, so I'm gonna probably read this before I get to the rest of my TBR for the challenge where you pick a title with an astrological word in it. I don't know, this has Broken Earth fifth season. It's very loose, but I know that Carrie said you could make as loose an association as you wanted to. And then my sun sign is a Gemini. So I asked Isabel on Twitter, thank you so much for replying to that very creepy tweet. So apparently there are siblings in Children of Blood and Bone, so that's what I'm gonna be reading for that sign. My moon is a Taurus, and that one is to pick a book with food on the title. So for that I'm picking Night of Cake and Puppets by Lainey Taylor. I'm pretty excited for this one because I've never read a Lainey that's not true. I've actually never read the Smoke and Bone trilogy, but I don't think you need to read that to appreciate this, so I'm just gonna try it. Also, it's the shortest on my list, so I think I could get this done in a day. And I never thought I'd be that bitch who like stops everything to make us appreciate how beautiful a book is, but this is 100% one of the books I did buy just for how pretty it is. Like it has pink and blue and it's, I'm assuming the characters and the inside is also pink and blue and see. So this is legitimately an all around super beautiful book. <laughs> so that's my Taurus moon and then my rising sun, I think that's what it is or my rising is Libra and that's to pick a book with a morally gray character. And for that, I'm finally getting to a book that I've wanted to get to for so long, I think like three years now. And that's A Little Life by Hanya Yanagihara. Queer Eye season three just came out and Anthony kind of referred to this again. So I feel like it is the most appropriate time for me to finally read it and understand and see what it's all about. I don't remember if while I talked about this when I did my books to read on your period tag, if I mentioned that this was actually one of the first books that I wanted to pick up and went out and bought because of, uh, not booktube, but bookstagram specifically. Uh, there was a bookstagrammer from Vancouver who was like constantly writing about this. It was the first time I was influenced by the book community as a whole. So those are my four books. The two other challenges involve you being a bit more social and they are the group read, which I don't think I'll have time to get to. And so I will probably just watch Carrie's videos like all the astrology sign ones and support her that way. And then the other one is to read, like to buddy read with somebody who has the same sun sign as you. I think all the Geminis do have a group chat on Twitter. They're going to be reading Witchwood. I thought about it and especially because I just posted a video about the darker side of YouTube and how it's difficult to make friends. So I will call myself out on this one and say that I think had I joined that group chat, I probably could have made friends. I did not want to be social and I didn't think I'd really participate in the combo. So even if I joined, I don't know, I'd have just been lurking. And I guess I'm just saying this because now I probably can't say that it's difficult to make friends online. In terms of what my day is going to look like, it's already actually kind of late in the day, to be honest. Yeah, I have to go downtown. Me and my brother are going to go see Dear Evan Hansen. So that'll be fun. And apparently the Northern Lights are visible today in Toronto. So that's my goal for today. Go see the musical and then hopefully see the Northern Lights. In terms of reading, which <laughs> is what you actually care about. <laughs> Uh, my plan is to finish the fifth season. If I spend my time commuting reading, I should be good. And then I'm probably gonna pick this one up. If I can hit this out of the park today as well and get two of them done, then I think I actually stand a chance at finishing my other two. I'm gonna go read now. Oh, actually, I guess just want to give a really quick, quick, quick update. Again, I don't know if that vlog is gonna go up, so I'm just gonna say I started it on audiobook and read the first 200 pages there. It was really hard for me to understand what was going on and to stay invested, and I don't know if it was the writing, I don't know if I was too stupid, I don't know what it was. It was kind of difficult to really follow what's going on. And so then I stopped and started reading the physical book, and 250 pages in, I suddenly started really liking it. Again, I don't know if it's because I was actually reading the book and it was easier to follow that way, 
or if at 250 it actually starts getting interesting like I'm not really sure because obviously the more you learn about the world the more you know the characters it's a bit easier to follow along with I'm glad I pushed through because I am really liking it now I'd heard so many good things about it like for its genre apparently it does a lot of things super well so I knew that I wouldn't DNF this like I was gonna try to read it till the end like even if I didn't like it but could understand what about it was so great I'd be happy this apparently also has morally gray characters I don't think they're that morally gray yet but hopefully that comes through so yeah I'm gonna try to finish this one and then I will give like a more cohesive what I thought at the end I forgot to say that my phone needs to be charged so please enjoy these random clips of me reading from yesterday no not even like two days ago before my exam but still during the readathon and you know just imagine hours later from that amazing brunch and I just wanted to do a quick update. I actually did pretty good like I read quite a bit today. Um, at one point I'd stopped because I wanted to do my nails and I can't read and do my nails so I watched a bit of Queer Eye and then I got back to this and I'm on page 412 of 449 so whatever that math is. I have like less than 50 pages to finish the book and I totally could push through but I don't know if you can tell or not but I am exhausted. I am like so tired and this book is like it takes a bit of work to concentrate on so I do want to finish it. I'm really liking it. It's all sort of coming together and it's actually really exciting and I do want to finish it. I just like want to finish it while I can stay awake so I can actually appreciate it because I found I was skimming some of the descriptions just because I'm like so tired and I can't fully con like I don't know it's just a little too high level for how exhausted I am and then I was like you know what why force myself to finish it like this is totally doable now so I'm just gonna switch it up a little but then I was like my other choice a little life is still a pretty thick heavy dense read children of blood and bone isn't I don't think as dense a read but because it's fantasy it would still take me like 50 to 100 pages to understand the world and to finally Feel like I know what's going on so I'm gonna pick up my shortest book Night of Cake and Puppets. I'm gonna try this one and hopefully like the pictures and the aesthetic of it keeps me awake a little. Yeah I <laughs> feel like such an old person saying this but um yeah I'm just always tired lately. <laughs> Um, actually this morning it was really cute how I got woken up I stayed over at my brother's yesterday and he just got a new cat so I like woke up to pee which is another old person thing <laughs> I came back and I like closed my eyes for maybe 10 minutes and then next thing I knew the cat's like walking on me the night before she like would not pay me any attention like she was just like no honey bye so I'd close my eyes and she's like walking on me and I thought she was slipping because she kept going like this like on my back and I thought she just like couldn't grip to go over but my brother says that that just means she likes you and she's giving you a massage and I don't know if that's a thing that all cats do but that is really cool <laughs> and I was just I don't know I felt really blessed to wake up like that so I'm gonna go try to read this we're having people over for Persian New Year today um, and then my mom also made me a gin and tonic this like beautiful lemon water here is that but if I'm tired and I start drinking I literally pass the fuck out so I don't know we'll see how today goes but like I literally have nothing to do like or like nothing planned so I am really 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 excited and hopeful that I can still make a dent on this TBR that I have for the readathon yeah I will give like a more full what I think about the book when I finish I think I feel like it's gonna be one of those books that's a bit difficult to explain really any of my thoughts I feel like almost anything I say will be a spoiler and honestly the less you know going into it the better. Having like a vague idea helps to understand what's going on because it's a bit confusing when it starts but if you can just embrace that you're not going to understand it for a little bit I think it's worth it to just push through and try to 
like do it yourself and not give into that temptation of like reading ahead and trying to figure out what's happening so that you can you know follow along easier i just think that it doesn't make sense but at some point it'll start to make sense oh and i guess i should give you my thoughts for dear evan hansen since i posted that i was so stoked to see that i'd heard one song somewhere and I really liked it. Next thing I knew, I was listening to the entire album on Spotify and I fell in love with the album. I felt like there were so many songs on the album that would make me cry and that was without even actually understanding the story. And I never read about the story, so actually seeing some of it was a bit different than what I had imagined when listening to the songs. But that just added to it. I really liked the play. There are obviously some problematic stuff if you want to get into like criticisms of it or whatever. There were aspects of it that weren't explored as much as I would have liked. It could have been more diverse. Oh, I will say, I guess my main criticism of it is that the message that they're trying to promote is good. <laughs> like understanding mental health and all the positivity. If you ever listen to the song or watch it, there's a lot of positivity and like learning to love yourself and you know, not feeling as alone in the world. There's a lot of really good positive messages is what I'm trying to say. But at the same time, a lot of problematic stuff is done and there are some things where it's like borderline, not at all good. <laughs> Some parts where you're like, like that's not really acceptable, but okay. <laughs> yeah, and obviously almost the entire thing revolves around an inability to communicate. So if you kind of hate that, then I, I don't know how much you'll love this play. If you're willing to suspend disbelief though, I think it's a really great play. So many people in the audience were crying. I like teared up a bit. I wasn't like full on going, but the girl next to me was like sobbing and trying to like contain it and then making weird choking noises. So it'll definitely hit at the heartstrings. Even though it's a really extreme representation of mental health, I think that most people will find something they can relate to or some aspect of it relatable. Okay, I guess that is it for now. I'm gonna go try to read and then I'll be back. It's a few days past the end of the readathon, but you know what? Better late than never. I'm finally getting to it. I finally have some free time from school. And I want to give you my final thoughts and just like a summary of how I did on this half-assed readathon. <laughs> so during my readathon, I ended up finishing The Fifth Season by N.K. Jemisin, and then I finished Night of Cake and Puppets by Lainey Taylor. I also read like half a chapter of, oh, <laughs> Children and Blood and Bone. So I started it. And now that the readathon is over, really the biggest question is, do I put this on pause and read books that I have out from the library? Or do I finally get to this? Because <laughs> I feel like I've been wanting to read this for so long and every time I think of picking it up, I put it back down. Now that I've started, I should finish it, but I have all these books from the library and I have limited time to read. So I might actually put this back down. But before I put it back down, I will say I did like the first half a chapter and it was so refreshing to go back to YA because it just takes a lot less brain cells. Like within the first few paragraphs, you know what's going on, you know what to expect. It's just like a comfort. What a relief to actually understand the world, to know the politics, to have an idea of where things are going, to understand that this is my heroine and we're gonna follow her. And it was just kind of nice. Like usually I like difference and blah, 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 but it was just really nice to be able to jump into it so quickly, especially after it took me a very, very long time to understand what was going on with this one. Let's talk the fifth season first. I don't remember what I updated you on, but essentially I think that pushing through to the end was worth it. I did really enjoy the book in the end. It's hard for me though because it's not so much that I liked reading the book and I loved seeing where the story was going, but at the end of it I think that this is a book that you could really discuss at like a book club meeting and that there's a lot to think about and I definitely am still thinking about things from it and trying to figure out just some stuff. <laughs> um, I can't give too much away obviously because I don't want to give away any spoilers but I can see like how much effort was put into the book if that makes sense. I kind of get why it won awards and I'm curious to see where the rest of the story goes so I will be continuing with it. You definitely have 
have to kind of push through, or at least I did, especially because I'm not a huge adult fantasy reader. And like I said, it was strenuous to get through and to just kind of wrap my head around a lot of things. And I'm not used to reading a book and having no idea what's going on. And like I said, that could partly be because of the audiobook, because as soon as I switched to reading it, it made a lot more sense. And it just, it's slower paced, so it takes a bit longer for you to get into the groove of things and like get to know the characters, etc, etc. It's worth reading for an experience and if you have read it and know what goes on or were shook by some things, feel free to tell me about it because <laughs> um, I haven't discussed this yet with anyone. Honestly, like I don't even know if I've really had time to think too much about it, but anyways, okay, I'll stop talking about this now. <laughs> so this was really cute. I think that the artwork made up for a lot of what the story didn't necessarily give me and I think that if you actually have read the Daughter of Smoke and Bone trilogy I think you'll like this way more and at the end of this book there's actually an excerpt from the first book of that series and to be honest it seemed a lot more interesting than this book. This is like really cute but if you have no reason to pick this up then don't pick it up. <laughs> Even if you like romance unless you're specifically invested in these characters from that other series I don't think that this is your best choice even just for like cute romance so that was that yeah and I already told you my thoughts on the first like 10 pages of this if you participated I guess let me know how it goes actually I'll probably end up seeing your vlog but if not you can link me and I'll be sure to check it out bye